Is Vic- 
and he fights for you and he fights for me and he fights for you he fights for me don't forget that he King of glory And he always wins Our King of glory Our King of glory So open up the gate, open up the gate, open up that ancient door, open up the gate, open up the gate, open up that ancient door, so be lifted up, lifted up, so be
Make way, make way, make way for the King of Glory, the King of Glory. Make way, make way, make way, make way for the King of Glory, for the King of Glory. Make way, make way, make way, make way. Make way, make way for the King of Glory. Make way, make way, make way, make way, make way, make way for the King of Glory to enter in. Make way, make way, make way, make way, make way, make way for the King of Glory to enter in.
any kingdom made with man's hands must come crashing down cause only your kingdom reigns in any other kingdom made with man's hands must come crashing down cause only yours remains and every other Bring in 
into his presence he'll bring right before his face and oh the generation all those who seek him he'll bring into his presence
So we'll sit and we'll stay Sit and stay, sit and stay, never go away Sit and stay, sit and stay, never go, never go, never go away I will sit and I will stay right here As you pour out your affection upon me And I pour out my affection upon you Oh, my heart is lovesick You're the only one who satisfies me No matter what's going on around me, my heart is fixed on you. Lover of my soul, I can never let you go. You're the only one who's worthy. Of all my affection, God You're the only one who's worthy Oh, how we love you Oh, how we love you Oh, how we need you Sit right by him 
everything I've said to you What look like impossibilities You're gonna see me move Just trust and believe Everything I've said to you Cause I'm not a man that I would lie to you And I'll never tease your heart I'll never put things in front of you that you can't obtain I'm gonna show you a better way I'm gonna show you a greater way Just trust and believe Trust and believe Everything you've seen Everything I've whispered to your heart Just trust and believe Trust and believe And nothing shall be impossible for you You will be a sign and a wonder on display for all to see Cause your life will be a testimony that points directly back to me Your life will be a testimony of my goodness and my faithful hand in your life. It points directly back to me. Cause I know it all. I know it all. My timing is perfect. You won't miss a thing Cause I know it all I know, I know it all I know your times and your seasons And you won't miss a thing I know your heart, I know your every thought, and I care for every detail, I care about everything you care about, just bring it all to me, lay it here at my feet. Just believe, just believe Nothing shall be impossible So our hearts respond to you that we trust and we believe it If you said it, you'll do it If you said it, you'll do it We trust you Now just believe, just believe Everything is possible Just believe, just believe That everything is possible
do it, Lord. I thank you that you're doing the impossible in our lives. Do it, do it, do it. Lord, our faith is raised to a new do level. It, God. Do it, God. That you are truly able to do anything that we ask or desire. You are the God of the impossible. You literally make the impossible possible because of your goodness, because of your power, because of your love. And Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you that you are the God of the impossible. May we be a people that believes in the impossible because you are with us, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Wow. If that prophetic worship didn't build your faith, I don't know if anything will. That was, that was awesome. God is so good. It's so good to be here again tonight. And there's so many wonderful things we have planned tonight. Uh, tomorrow morning, remember, we're here at 10 a.m. We may start early, but it starts at 10 a.m. on paper anyway. So get here early. You just never know. One of the things that I'm privileged to help oversee for Kevin is Warrior Fellowships. How many know about Warrior Fellowships? Raise your hand. Well, Warrior Fellowships is something that was birthed in the heart of Kevin and Kathy to bring even more his teaching, uh, his impartation to the home, to home fellowships. Warrior Fellowships are simply home fellowships where uh, every month Kevin sends videos, PDFs, so on and so forth, so you can start gathering a group of like-minded believers, the remnant, so you can all be on fire to, for God together. You can all win the loss together. You can all pass out groceries to the poor. You can pray in tongues together. You can heal the sick and cast out devils. Amen? Amen. Basically, everything you see in the book of Acts. So we started these, uh, Kevin started these warrior fellowships, and if you're a student, you are automatically uh, qualified. I mean, everybody's qualified in a sense of being a Christian, but within our uh, group, if you're a, a student in our school of ministry, and there's plenty of free courses in there, ways you can sign up, you automatically can be enrolled in our warrior fellowship. And these warrior fellowships, now there's over 1,200 around the world of these, of these fellowships, and they're doing such tremendous things for the kingdom of God. If you want to participate, you may say, well, I don't want to host right now. If you want to participate, all you do is you go on our website and there's a place on there where you can get, uh, get the link and you put in your address. And then if there's anywhere close to you within, I think, a 60 mile radius, they'll contact you uh, if there's a, a Warrior Fellowship near you. They're all over the United States. They're all over the world. I'm telling you, the ones that we have in Germany right now, we have a, we have a major one in Berlin. Everybody say amen. amen. We have a major one in Berlin, but they sent me a map. Uh, warrior fellowships are literally taking over all of Germany. They're like everywhere. <laughs> and so I'm really proud of that. I really am. Uh, I, 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 mean, I, get, I mean, I have German ancestry in me, but just everything that the enemy tried to do with Germany, God is taking it back with these warrior fellowships, which, which there's no, the only qualification is you got to be a Christian. And that's everybody in here. That's everybody that's watching. And, and so I want to encourage you, get involved, because uh, two quick testimonies uh, from these two fellowships in other places. This lady said, I, I'm, I'm saying it tongue in cheek, but this is how she wrote it. Pastor Ryan, everyone is now baptized in the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues in our group. And so there you go. It's like, just so you know, everybody's praying in tongues in our group now who didn't before. That's seven people that have their prayer language now. This one group, I believe um, this may be in England. It's either England or, or Australia. We have a team of nine ladies in our Warrior Fellowship that are on fire for God. Although we're on lockdown, we email the teaching each week we meet. I have testimonies of healing and supernatural provision. We're so excited. We, even though lockdown is happening, I believe that we're going to continue to explode. And she just goes on and on. You can't stop the gospel. You know, no matter what's going on. And these people, I believe, I believe this one was in Australia. We got to really pray for Australia with what's going on there still with the lockdown. So they said, you know what? Okay, if you're going to limit us, then we're going to do everything by Zoom. And so all this Zoom is happening all over Australia with warrior fellowships. And I'm telling you, the power got people, listen, even though there's a thing going on there, people are being provided for supernaturally. 
And, and I'm just telling you, you got to get involved with these fellowships. These fellowships, I'm a pastor, as uh, Kevin said earlier, but these fellowships are to be a supplement to the local church. There's no competition. There's just another way that you can reach out to your neighborhood, your community. And there's no reason, and, and I'm saying this with with confidence. There's no reason that every single one of you can't be hosting a warrior fellowship where you're, where, let's take back Texas, amen? Yeah. All right. A couple of quick announcements just as a reminder. We're gonna be in Dalton, Georgia next month, uh, November 12th and 13th, especially for people that are watching online. And John Ramirez is gonna be with us. And uh, we're gonna, uh, Kevin is gonna, uh, uh, John is gonna uh, join up with Kevin. It's gonna be a powerful time. If you don't know John Ramirez, he was an ex-warlock. And uh, we're gonna do a lot of damage between him and Kevin. There's gonna be a lot of damage done uh, over the airways and in Dalton, Georgia. <laughs> Uh, November. So please, it's going to be historic. So please come out November 12th and 13th to Dalton, Georgia. Uh, real quick, Amarillo. I think you all Texans know about Amarillo. Uh, November 15th, uh, we have a one night meeting in Amarillo, Texas, November 15th. We have a one night meeting in Texarkana, November 19th. And so just get, go to the webpage, get on the events uh, uh, site and just sign up. Just, just, just come. Just be a part of what God's doing. Amen. Before we take the offering, one more announcement. I'm so excited about this brand new book. Kevin didn't ask me to come up here and share this, but uh, I gotta tell you again about Prayer Nations. This is the first book that Kevin and Kathy have co-authored together. And so uh, when you read it, I gotta tell you, 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 feel, you feel these little like uh, bursts of joy going through your body as you read it because you realize, because the subtitle says, when God suddenly comes in and you realize that, yeah, you know what? God did it for Kathy, God did it for Kevin, God can do it for me. Amen. So that's what this whole book is about, praying through, getting your answers to prayer. And so grab that. It's at the book table. And if you're online watching, I realize you can't run to the book table. You can get it on uh, Amazon. So uh, we're excited about all the books that Kevin is putting out. So let's take an offering. Amen. Amen. Ushers, if you come, I'd appreciate that. If you're making out your check, you can make it out to Warrior Notes. If you're giving online, which thank, we're so thankful for all the people that give online, uh, you can uh, do the text to give there. You heard Kevin very transparently share this afternoon about the giving uh, and the financial needs of Warrior Notes. Do you remember what he said about the financial needs of Warrior Notes? There isn't any. So with that being said, of course, you got to pay the bills and you got to pay for the lights and you know, the conference. Of course, we all know that. But the point is, the, the more that comes in, the more Kevin and Kathy are looking for ways to get it to somebody else. You know what? While I'm here, one of the things that he did while I'm here being Kevin, he's saying, I'm going to do damage to the kingdom of darkness and just give back to the people. Give to those who can't give back. Give to widows. Give to orphans and just bless the people, amen? And listen, every church should be doing that. Every one of us should be doing that. Let's take their lead, let's follow their lead, take their example, and give like, it, like there's no tomorrow, amen? So Father, we thank you for the opportunity to sow into your kingdom, to be a part of what you're doing. We thank you for all the people that have been stepping up and say, hey, I'll pay for that conference, I'll pay for that conference. Lord, you're touching hearts, you're touching lives, Lord, because we're all understanding that it's not about receiving, it's about giving. It's about money not having a hold of us, Lord. We, we're getting that revelation, Lord. And we thank you that it is truly more blessed to give than to receive, Lord. And we love you. We thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. If uh, you weren't able to stay for when the kids were doing the sim, it was so precious to see their little faces glowing. And tonight when Julie was singing and, and uh, the team about no, that there's no limits, right? I was seeing that go re just exploding inside their hearts. And let me tell you, you know, when there's, a, when there's somebody finally gets it that there's no limits, they're very dangerous. They're very dangerous. And I'll tell you, Kevin and Kathy have taught me that more than anything, that when you realize that God has written a book about you and there's no limits, you begin to do incredible things for God because there's nothing that's going to stop you. And a lot of times the thing that stops you is you. 
So you got to get the you out of the way. And you got to put Jesus in that place, right? And so to I say all that because I, we just, we're so thankful for all the partners. You guys have just been so incredible. When we look at the kids, when we look at everything that happens, you know, we've got instruments up here tonight. All the lives are being transformed. It's the partners that are making this possible. So if you're a partner, I just wanted to say thank you again and tell you how much Kevin and Kathy and the whole team appreciate you guys. And we wish we could just come give you a big hug like every day. But I want you to know how much we're praying for you because all this is for you. Just like you've been given, we're, we're, Kevin and Kathy and the team are wanting to give it back to you. And so when you see the kids, when you see all these things coming out, we're about to have some exciting things with Warrior Health, homeschool, all these things are, are in full steam. And as they're coming out, and let me tell you, as a reminder, you'll hear about it on Warrior Chat. Yeah, that's, that was supposed to be a clap. Yeah, Warrior Chat. I want you to know that th you're supposed to be a part of this because you are a part of this. You were always meant to be a part of this. Isn't that awesome? So with that being said, I got to encourage uh, my future students in here. Dr. Kevin's new course, Days of Heaven on Earth, is coming out next week. And it is zero dollars. Absolutely free. And so a lot of times I'll hear people say, well, all, God did all this in me at the conference. Like, what's my next step? And I'm going to tell you what your next step is. It's to click and roll. Because, see, the enemy doesn't think you're going to do something about it. So when you click and roll and you start to take your discipleship to the next level, all the demons start freaking out, right? Because now, like uh, Kevin has been talking about the book of James a lot this weekend, now your faith has to have action. You have to do something about it. So you put an extra $20 in your wallet and you find somebody that needs it. You take a course, you start a fellowship, you begin to minister to people and their needs, right? Because when you do that, you break out of everything that tried to hold you back. Amen? All right, so warriornoteschool.com. If you're not a student, I don't care if you're 99 years old, I want you to click and roll and I want you to tell your whole family, call them up and say, I've enrolled in college. I'm being discipled, and I'm changing the world for Jesus. And if, there you go. And if you feel like you've lost years, you're going to be accelerated now, and you are going to blow past everything you didn't even think you could achieve. You're going to blow past it because the Holy Spirit's going to take you there. Amen? All right, Dr. Kevin Zadai. We're ready, though. We'll stay back. Okay. Okay. Testing. I know I paid for these batteries. Come on. Now. Hello. Everybody hear me? Okay. I, um, I want to give away the instruments. There's no easy way to do this. So what we end up doing, we end up calling the kids up and then whoever doesn't get an instrument, we just take a list, which ends up being about 60 more instruments that we just ship out. So there's no easy way to do it because it's really not fair. And I used to just have the Lord tell me, give it this, give this, and this person gets this. And after a while, it's not easy for me to do that because I'm not, I'm not able to just operate and pick 60 people out that are praying for the exact instrument they're believing for, you know, and get that right on 100%. I'm not that good. So there's no easy way to do this. And I don't want to make it hard and I don't want it to be disappointing to the kids. So what I would ask is, is that the, the parents of the kids, if you feel in your heart that your child is supposed to have an instrument, and um, I don't see it on eBay tomorrow morning. <laughs> so in other words, if there are parents here with their children and you feel like uh, they are supposed to have one of these instruments, would you just come up here? Because there's no easy way to do this. So just come up with your child. And um, I've got drums, I've got flutes, I've got violins, I've got guitars and... Um, Huh? Yeah. Oh, see what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So they're just going to dish them out and then we'll take everybody's name and then we'll just, Warrior Notes will just ship you an instrument. How's that? Oh, amen. Okay. All right. Now, while the kids are up here, I don't want them, I don't want them to leave. 
the building with their instrument. I want them to come up here because I have something else I need them to do. I need them to minister to you. See, the whole goal is, is at the end of this year and listen, everybody, listen, everybody's listening. What my goal is, is that these kids next year are going to be part of the worship. So, I mean, that's my goal. That's my goal is I give them, I give them some time to practice and then I'm going to start forming kids worship teams, which will be part of the service next year. Every time that we're somewhere, we'll, do you get it? So that the kids will be part of it. If they did not get an instrument, just they can go see Rebecca over here. Okay, anybody that did not get an instrument, uh, go over and see Becca over there. And she'll take your address and we'll ship you one on Amazon. And we're not even at Christmas yet. I'm just doing this because the devil thinks he has a holiday tomorrow. Yeah. So I'm going to make it really hard on him. Okay. All right. So the other thing is that we have prayer clauses up here and uh, we're going to have our staff and our ministers pray over these. And then I need, I need everyone that needs healing or knows somebody that needs healing to get up here when I tell you. And I also need, uh, after that, if there's any left, uh, anybody that has any kind of demonic activity, which is everybody. So... That, but I mean, I'm talking about serious stuff, like where you need me to come to your house and, and whip, whip up on him. If it's, if it's stuff that's moving around in your house, if you got, you got, you got these things um, messing around with you, you know what I'm saying. You know, a couple notches above. I need, I need you to come up here and get one of these prayer claws. And we're, we're going to pray over them. And then I want you to just start to come up. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start over here. We got everybody. Come on up here, all, all of y'all. I don't know some of you, but you can come up here. Yeah, I know you. That's right. All right. Pray over. You might want to, yeah, you might want to get up. There we go. Okay. Come over here. Pray. Let's pray over these. And then I want you all to start coming up right now. I need those who need healing or know somebody that needs healing. And then I also need, there's a lot of excessive demonic activity. I want to help you with that too. All right. All right. Everybody pray over them and then we'll just hand them out. Thank you all. Oh, These are so nice. Quality item. It's a quality item. Yes. You can have one. All right. All right. Pass them out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, did you have, did you, did you, did you pray over them? Okay, there were some of them yeah. and they got taken okay. away. <laughs> okay, Mike, Mike and Mike and him, could you get the rocks now Absolutely. and bring them over here and open them up, lay them up. I know.
Okay. Now, anybody else? Anybody else that just wants a cloth to put under your pillow so that God will give you dreams at night? Just get up here. We got plenty of cloths up here. If you would, if you would like God to speak to you at night in a dream, come up here and get a cloth and put it under your pillow. The Apostle Paul laid hands on claws and people had demons leave them, he, they got healed, and it's just a point of contact. And there, there is something to it. All right, now I need all the kids to come back up here. All the kids come up here. I need the kids to come up here and help me. Okay, up here, right here. Come up here to the stage. Come up here towards me, all the kids. Okay. Now, the Lord had spoken to me. I've got, I've got uh, an assignment to train, train the, the kids to give words out. So what I have up here is I have a bunch of rocks that have words on them. And the kids are going to take a rock, pray over it, and then they're going to go out and God's going to tell them who to give it to. So you're about to get a word. There's a word on every rock. And I'm going to teach the kids how to give a word. So I want all you kids, you see all these rocks? They have words on them. You, you just choose one and then you pray over it and you walk out there and you hand it to somebody, okay? Let God lead you. Don't forget there's people in the back row. And the mean kids. You a kid here. Now this is you. Now you pray over that and you hand it to somebody, okay? You go out there and you hand it out to a, one of the people out there. Okay, everybody got one? I'll get out of your way. You just go ahead, grab, grab what you want. I had a testimony to tell you. Okay. Um, so when I was here last time, I was praying and stuff in my call to be an evangelist. Mm -hmm. And later on, someone came up to me and told me that I'm called to be an evangelist and they gave me a note to pass around. It's cool. like verses to give to like other believers or people that don't know God right. and so I was just praising God and it all happened today so I just want to thank you for your like oh, you're believing thank you <laughs> God bless you that's powerful okay we'll give it to somebody okay alright and get back up here those of you who have already given out your rock get up here we'll give it to somebody else and get another okay. one go ahead no, anybody else. you can give out two words go ahead grab one go ahead grab one now you got to give the one that you have out before you can come back up here. I don't want to see you coming up here with a rock. All right, here you go. What, what else? I'm forgetting anything else. Anything else to give away? Huh? Okay. Okay. No, I'll, I'll pray. Right. We, got, we have more. Everybody take hands up here. Everybody take hands. Father, I agree with you that all demons must be expelled. And I break, I break the power of the devil right now. I trample on serpents and scorpions. And I take authority over every evil spirit. And I command all of you to leave in Jesus' name. Right now, go in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus against you. 
I expel you. I drive you out in Jesus' name. I break curses over these people. I break all kinds of word curses. Anything in their genetics, anything in their bloodline, anything, any demonic spirit, how dare you touch these children of God. I break your power. I inform you that you shall not return. You will never come back. I forbid you to come back in Jesus' name. Deliverance has come to this ho these houses. Everyone in this room will experience deliverance. Everyone will experience deliverance. And it shall be permanent. We drive you out, Satan. We drive you out in the name of Jesus. And by the blood, the power of the blood of Jesus, you're defeated. We drive you out. You are cursed. I command every evil spirit to let go of people's bodies. I command sickness to go in Jesus' name. I command mental torment to go in Jesus' name. Depression go in Jesus' name. Rejection go in Jesus' name. Trauma go in Jesus' name. Hatred, murder, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Religion, I command you to go in Jesus' name. You foul, lying devil. I break the power of religion in Jesus' name. Fire, holy 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 fire. From the altar, the holy fire of God. Is that it? You good? Okay. <coughs> okay. The, the Lord Jesus wants me to talk about uh, the glory of the Father tonight. And I, I, I have to explain a couple things. Um, this always, this always causes a stir. And um, in fact, I wrote in a book that was compiled by a bunch of authors about, as a Christmas book. And they asked me to do a chapter in this book with a lot of the authors. And you know, it's a, it's by, Des it's a, it's by Destiny Image and you can buy it. I think we have some back there, but I, you know, I'm not saying that because you go buy it. You can just, you can just do what you want. But the, 
the thing that the attitude that I have about Christmas is is the same attitude I have about everything. That that I focus on the truth of what is going to glorify the Father and the Son. So it's essentially whatever the Spirit of God wants to do in any situation is what I'm going to do. Now, if that involves a holiday, because holiday came from the word holy day, it's just like mass. It's Christ, it's Christ mass. So you can make anything evil if you manipulate. But the true may be in, in a lot of different things that, that appear to be evil and the same vice versa. So it's, it's usually a mixture. So if I were to be a stickler the way people are, then I can't even say Saturday because that's the God of Saturn. And sun is, tomorrow is Sunday, that, that's the sun God. And I can just go through every single day. And I'm not really essentially allowed to say those words because they're false gods. And I haven't even got to the months yet. Right? So Satan has gotten into everything. And so you're, you have things on your lips that you have to say. That, you know, like if we would be honest, that they're profane. Okay, but there is truth that actually Satan is after by infiltrating and, and trying to make it compromised so that just a little bit of something ruins the whole thing. But that, but that doesn't succeed in, in, the, in, in us because Jesus, in the article that I wrote in my, in my chapter, you know, I'm not just going to do like everybody else does, of course. You're never going to find me doing what everybody else does. If everything else that everybody's doing is wrong. Right. But it might not be wrong to a lot of people. It might not be wrong to, to others. But to me, I wrote an article in the Christmas book about the timeless past where Christ was always... God. So he appeared in the flesh, but he had he was pre-existent. So I, I my chapter was called the pre-existent Christ. Well, that goes over well, you know, when you're trying to put him in a manger, you know. But see, if you put him in a manger, then you're going to put Rudolph beside him, and Frosty. Before you know it, you just got a carnival. Right? But if I call him the pre existent Christ that came and tabernacled among us, but he always was, well, that's, that's the truth and that's the supernatural fact. But you would not believe, just like people don't want me to celebrate Christ, Christ Mass, they also think it's profane that I said that Christ was pre existent. And they said, no, he is the son of God. He was born, and that is when he started to exist. Oh, you wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. Oh, you wouldn't believe it. There is so much error out there in good people. Okay, so Jesus always existed when he prayed in John 7. No, I don't, I don't answer these people because I'm not going to get pulled into that. I'm just going to preach the gospel. But he prayed in John. He said, Father, you love me just like you, you, love, you love them as well as just as much as you love me. He said, can you reveal to them the glory that me and you shared before the universes were lit up? Is what it says in Aramaic. Now, he said that. And it's, he's preexistent. Okay, so he's saying the same glory that me and you share before the foundations of the world, before we lit up the universes together, he said, share that with them. Show them so that they can know the same glory. Okay, this is what it says in John 17. So why would somebody waste their time with me? So 
It's the same thing if you just do that. It's just like the movie Talladega Nights. They're arguing at the table. You know, he's praying to baby Jesus in the manger. And he's like, why are you doing that? Well, he says, well, Ralph here, he's a mechanic. He, he, God's a mechanic to him. But to me, it's baby Jesus in a manger. But, that, you know, that's the, other, that's the same guy that was up in the air doing twists like this in his car. And he goes, yeah, I'm definitely airborne. It took him a while. After about three turns, yeah, I'm airborne. Okay. So the glory was before the foundations of the world. And God existed, and people were asking me these questions. And they really are valid questions. But when people ask these type of questions, it shows me how much work we have to do. Okay, because the question, the question is, who made God? You know, and I, I can just go through the whole list of them. Okay. So if you want to do that, then that's the same as the people that blame me for the weather when I work for the airline. <laughs> they blame me for the weather. And, and they were mad. Some of them were threatening me. And I said, sir, do you think that I would be working on this airplane if I could control the weather? And when the airplane's broken and we can't go and we've called for the mechanic, they're mad at me. I go, well, you know what? I'll just tell them we'll just go with, what, with it the way it is. <laughs> well, then all of a sudden, then they back off. They back off. Okay. No, that's okay. Or when they come on, they say, you know, I'm flying today. They, they tell me I'm flying. I go, well, I'm leaving then. <laughs> so people... They place, they place emphasis on certain things. They give it power. When, when God isn't even on the same carousel that we're on. So our perception is based on where we're seated. But God is outside of time and he's limitless. And he doesn't have to explain how he was made. Because he doesn't have any limitations, which means that there is no point where he could tell you that he started to exist. Because he doesn't play the game. He's not even playing the game. He's not on the carousel with you. He's off observing. He's waiting for you to get off the carousel and be separate. See, you're, you're, li you're, you're, you're limited by your body. You're limited by your mind. But your spirit is not limited. So down here, we have to focus on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And like I told you already, this is in Ephesians chapter 2 in the, in the fifth, fifth verse and sixth verse. And then in Colossians, it's in the first couple of verses there in Colossians 3. See, Paul he got caught up and he saw the way things really are and then he was sent back. And because of that, he had a perception that is different than the people that he was sent to. This always happens. Every time someone receives understanding about something, it opens up everyone else to operate in that. So God was constantly revealing himself, but he hasn't revealed all of himself. So we look at our bodies and we're limited. We look at disease and it seems like it has an advantage at times. But see, does it really have an advantage or is it just we don't know what we could be doing to help it, to help the body protect itself and to heal? It, it's the same thing with your mind. If I mean, I know this because I was off the carousel. I know that I can help my body. But I also know that I can help a lot of things in my life that would not be an issue if I could change my thought processes. So people don't understand their limitations 
because they haven't let God take them off the carousel, so to speak. And you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you take your kids to a carnival and you're sitting on the bench and you're letting them go on all these rides. And they're sitting there on the carousel riding a fake horse and they're, they're more excited than if it was a real one. <laughs> but see, to them, this is, this is something that they experience that is enough for them until they ask you for a horse. And just remember, these things eat while you sleep. <laughs> and a pilot told me one time, don't invest in something that eats while you sleep. <laughs> but of course, my wife likes horses, so. Okay. So we think we got the real thing until someone says something from the other realm. Like Jesus, when he said this in this prayer, it made baby Jesus in a manger and the, and the wise men and the, the uh, shepherds and the star. You know, the nice little story. It makes it, okay, so you can see the nativity scene. And it's sacred. It's, it, we put one in our yard because we're celebrating the birth of Jesus. But you got to remember something, that Jesus was preexistent with the Father. And it says, John said, he came and tabernacled among us and we beheld his glory. But he came down and was clothed in flesh. You gotta remember that. So you can't just camp around your nativity scene because he grew up. <laughs> and his mom lost him for three days. You know, Mary, the mother, you know, the sacred Mary? Yeah. Okay, so she lost Jesus for three days. Didn't notice that he was gone. Okay, then, then when he went to the wedding, she set him up to start his ministry that day. And he didn't call her mom. He said, he said, woman. It's not my time. See, all of a sudden, he wasn't little baby Jesus in the manger anymore. He grew up in the, the fear of the Lord, the nurture of the Lord. He grew up in stature. He discovered, and he knew who he was. And when it was time, he started to perform miracles, and he started to preach. But at the end of his life, it was only really not an end. It was just a, an assignment that was fulfilled. And he says, I'm going to go and return to my father. He said, I'm not from this world. He told Pilate, I, 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 I'm from another kingdom. Oh, so you are a king. And he told, he simply said, you can't handle the truth. And Pilate goes, well, what is truth anyway? So you just have this worldly argument with somebody who is on a carousel and he doesn't even want to be on assignment there. He'd rather be back in Rome rubbing shoulders with the big boys, but he's assigned to this outpost. Okay, so Pilate should have listened to his wife, who was warned, okay? She was warned to have nothing to do with this man. Well, she had a deeper revelation than he did. Don't you know that I could set you free? He says, you wouldn't have any power unless God gave it to you. Well, that didn't go over well. You don't talk to somebody like that, that way. So it just made it, it made it worse. But Jesus was pushing it because this is what needed to be done. Okay, but when he, I guarantee you, no one sat on his throne while he was down here. I guarantee you, he went back and sat where he sat before. This is what glory is. It has to do with the throne and the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that were there. They left and they came down. Jesus got on the carousel with people and he went and did their thing. Even though it was, it was he considered equality with God as nothing, but became a servant but he was God. He came down and he considered 
being equal with God, it says, the scripture says, as nothing, but became a servant, became like us. But John says we beheld his glory. So what was that? It has to do, in heaven, it has to do with stature. It has to do with the way everything's placed. Everything is immaculate in heaven. So it looked like it would take a day to go across the throne room. It's, it, it's so big, but I don't understand it. Well, it's because the dimensions are different. For instance, Jesus still has his body. Well, that goes over well, but he, he does. He is a man, God. He's a God man. He took his body with him. It doesn't have any blood in it. He can walk through walls. It splits apart. The atoms separate and he can walk through things without being dismembered. He can eat with you and then he can go through a wall. Enoch stepped over in his body and still has his body. Elijah stepped into a chariot with his body and still has his body. Okay? Angels, an angel was leashed against the Assyrians because they, they came against is the Israelites. It says that an angel slew 185,000 Assyrians in a night. Okay, so you think, well, the angel has a, a lightsaber, invisible sword, but to those men, that was a real sword because they're dead. Okay, so it was an invisible sword that cut them and killed them, okay? Moses was told it's time to die, but he goes, oh, no, that's, I'm fine, I'm good. I'm 120, I'm good. Have my eyesight, climb this mountain, we're good, God. No, you're done. And he dropped dead. Ananias and Sapphira, they lied to the Holy Spirit in the New Testament church. And, the, and Peter didn't even try to help. Is this what you paid? Thanks a lot, Peter. I thought you were a good, nice pastor. You're not walking in love. Well, see, who killed Ananias and Sapphira? Who killed, who killed Moses? Who killed those 185,000? Okay, so Jesus grew up. He became a man, but he was God. He was crucified buried he went to the belly of the earth for three days and then he rose from the dead he did a lot of damage down there in hell he 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 did a lot of damage he told me he went to the deepest part where the most vilest sinner would go he he bought back all the property so that no one would have to go there okay he went up to the earth again, preached for 40 days on the kingdom, ate with them, walked through a wall, and then got on a cloud and went to glory and is seated at the right hand of God. Now, that is a little different than the nativity scene because the nativity scene is based on magicians visiting, magi. Come on now, magi is magicians. Following a star. The shepherds show up, but where were the people? The ma magicians show up, where, where were the people? So, so not everyone discerns what's really going on. So we have pieces of things, but we shouldn't have pieces of things because the way the new covenant is set up is we, should, we have it all, but it's by revelation. The revelation is, is that God always existed because he doesn't have clocks and any distance. He's not limited. It's not a really hard thing if you're off the carousel. So I, I know that I'm going to pass away. I know that I have a body and death has not been defeated. Jesus defeated death, but it's the only enemy Paul says that we still have. It's the only thing that has not been taken care of. But we've been given authority, and he's asking us to pray. But he, we all still die. Okay, so that's the last enemy. But we really don't die. 
It's the costume we're wearing. It's the earth suit. It's, the, it, it's how we operate in this realm is through the body. When you, when you leave, you're separated from your body, you are with the Lord. And that's what happened to me. I was with the Lord. He was right there as soon as I left my body. He was in full glory, but yet he had his body. And it was interesting to me because the other realm, as soon as I pass away, I come out of my body and I'm standing in the parallel realm, which is just as real as this realm, but it's actually better. And it's more brighter. It's more colorful. Everything is at a higher, uh, a higher level. And yet Jesus came through a portal, a bright portal. He walked through it. Now, we're in the spirit realm. I don't have my body. It's on the table. I'm walking around, and Jesus comes through a door in the spirit. I'm like, this is a little bit much. <laughs> it was like a shortcut. So you went through it, and who knows where he went when he came out of that. Why did he have to have that? Because he still has his body. Well, that doesn't explain much. But see, there's more. You can't explain the throne room. Isaiah tried. Ezekiel tried. Daniel tried. They all, John tried. Talking about all these creatures with eyes all around them and creatures that look like eagles and ox and a man. And it's like, give me a break. Can you just like, here, draw it out. <laughs> no, you know, like, well, in that other realm, there, there, there are times where there's no reference points. You can't like say, okay, this is this, and then it, over here is this, because there's more dimensions. So God always existed because he never, ever was on the carousel. He sent Jesus down, and they killed him in three and a half years. I've lasted five. But they killed Jesus in three and a half years of ministry. Think about it. He did the will of the Father, and he lasted three and a half years. They killed him. Why? Because he was from the other realm, and he came down here, and he, he, everywhere he went, he influenced this realm. Well, that doesn't go over well with the demonic. And if somebody tells you that you can do this for your health, the demon system does not want people to know that that it might be growing in your yard and not at the pharmacy. That if you'd stop doing certain things, you wouldn't need that medicine anymore. Why? Because the limitations that are placed on us have to do with our mindset too. Because your mind actually is neutral. It just takes information and causes a response in your body. So you think about something and then you can feel it and you can feel the, the response of your thoughts. It becomes your perception and your mind is neutral. It's just like in the airplane, whatever I put in there, it just does. It's not going to argue with me because it's not, it's, it's not geared to do that. It just takes information and it performs what you ask. And if you think you can do better, then you just take it off the autopilot. But I usually know that the computer does better, but I, I still, I'm still monitoring it. Okay, so I remember excelling to the place where I entered one race where it was a lot of people. It was thousands of runners. My number that I drew was number eight out of several thousand which means I'm eight, I'm eight up there in the front line, which means if I don't keep up the pace, I will be run over. So I thought, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna keep up with everybody for the first mile, and then what I will do, after, or the first, you know, the, the first kilometer, and then I'm going to back into my pace so that I can do all the whole 15K. So my idea was, I 
wanted to check to see if somebody could call out the mile because I was based on miles at the time. So they said, yeah, we'll have somebody at the, at the mile markers. We'll call out your time. That way I can kind of gauge because I can't go by my environment because a lot of those people might not be as experienced as I think just because it was a random drawing on how you got there. But if they're, the, the people they put in front, you have to keep up or you're going to get messed up with thousands of people running. Well, what happened is these people were only going to run for the first kilometer or two and then drop out. Because that's what would happen in races. You would have these people that would set the pace, but they were purposely, they were, called, they were rabbits that called, we called them rabbits. And they would send the rabbits out to try to wear you down, get you to do a faster pace so that you wouldn't be able to hold it. So that's why you had to know what the standard was for you. Because they were, they were, they were purposely, so I was fine. I kept up, I, I just picked a couple of people that I could tell were professionals and I just kept up with them. Everything was fine. I felt, I felt perfect. Now, mind you, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be running probably 10 miles or nine something for a 15K. So I gotta, I, I gotta, I gotta remember, I gotta do eight more of these once they call it that mile, okay? But I'm fine until the guy calls out a 458 mile, which in my school would be close to a record of 456 for a mile, that's it. I got eight more to go. And as soon as I heard that, all of a sudden I started, I could feel the chemicals in my body start to go, it went right through my bloodstream because my heart rate's up. And all of a sudden, when I thought that is too fast and I am going to get tired and not finish the race, my brain started to excrete chemicals to make that happen. But up until I heard that time, I, I could have kept on going at that pace. And it's just like the, the, you know, the four minute mile. Nobody could break it until somebody accidentally did. And then the next, within the next couple of weeks, there, was, there were several people that broke the four minute mile. And I could spend all night talking about this. How we limit, you know, who said that you can only live to be 100? Who's dictating that? And if you remember, the 120 was spoken by God because he was done with man. But I think he's okay now because of Jesus' blood. So I'm just asking you this because Jesus, when he came back from heaven, he came to the earth and he walked among us. You got to remember that, yes, he had a body. He was, he was a man. But his limitations were that he took on a body, but the temptations in the desert were testing him to see if he would act as a son of God, which he couldn't do. If you are the son of God, turn this stone into bread. Well, Jesus told me, he said, I'm looking at this being that I created. I remember the day I created him. And he's asked, he says, if you are the son of God. So that wouldn't be a temptation. The temptation was to get Jesus to do something out of the boundaries of a man, son of man, being led by the Holy Spirit. If you remember, the key to this whole story is that he was led into the desert to be tempted by the Holy Spirit, it says. The Spirit led him into the desert to be tempted of the devil. Doesn't it say that? Okay, so the temptation had to be real. But the temptation was that everything he did while he was on the earth was, so, was in the boundaries of man because if he did anything as a son of God, then he couldn't say, you're going to do the same things and even greater things because I go to the Father. He couldn't say that if he did something as God. Does everybody follow me? Yes. So religion cloaks this truth. 
Who said you have to get COVID? Who, yeah, I said it. They'll just, if they knock me off, they knock me off. But who, who told you that? The bats don't get it. The animals, the swine, the bird, the avian, that none of these animals get this. It's, it's, in heaven, it's not written that I die of a disease. My name in, in heaven, I saw it on a stone, is victory. My name, it's a white stone that says victory on it. And I was told I was a victorious warrior. So how I die is, is that I please God so much and then I wasn't. I walked over. I walked over. Okay, now I have that revelation so I don't get sick. Well, what happened? I was off the carousel. I was shown something that increased my perception and then my mind, I won't allow it to work against me. I won't allow my emotions because you give me a dirty look, I'm not gonna let that in any way change my course. They try to change my course flying in here. I just ask for higher, up where no one else is. So we're over the storm where everyone else is like, we're getting beat up, can we have another, another heading? You know, Southwest Airlines flying down there low and slow. <laughs> just, we just went over it. Well, I wasn't limited like they were. So who told you you can't do something? Who told you that you can't dream? And then if you do dream, who told you that it can't come to pass? The, the pre-existent Christ, what he preached, what he did, what he accomplished on the earth was good enough for right now when it's the worst that you've ever seen. It, the worst situation, Jesus still did it. And is seated at the right hand of God, not coming back. There's no amendments. He's not going to redo something in, that wasn't right in the paperwork. He's not coming back and doing it again. He's not going to do it for an alien or a hybrid. He's not going to go through that for another race. We are it. This is what Satan wants to hide, is your value. So... If you're willing to die for him, are you willing to live for him? If you get past yourself and you accomplish the crucified life, then isn't it time that we share in his glory? Because Jesus said, I want them to experience the same glory that me and you shared. I want you love them just as much as you love me. And would you show them the unity that me and you shared can they be with us and share in the same unity? Right. It says that in John 17. But it's one of the least chapters that's preached in John. And what it is, it's too good to be true. And see, the glory of God is too good to be true. Because nothing in the glory stays broken. Right. So Jesus when he reached out in compassion, he reached out and corrected what was wrong with the person based on what the original plan for his father was. So if you were sick, he reached out in compassion and he was correcting the discrepancy. So he was healing the sick because his plan was to correct what his father had originally intended for that person. So if a girl who was dead was laying there in a funeral and it wasn't her time to go, if it was too early, he would ruin the funeral. He would come and he would bring her back or bring him back because he was correcting the calendar. You get it? Okay, he did that with demons. Demons were trespassing. So he drove them out because they didn't belong there. 
He didn't have to say anything. He just showed up. When he showed up, people were shocked at, at how he spoke. But see, he wasn't speaking from this realm. He was speaking from the other realm, bringing to the people the Heavenly Father's kingdom, revealing it to them and telling them that God is a good God and salvation comes from him. Amen. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Those who believe on me, they're going to have eternal life. He said, the, he said, the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. He said, but I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. He didn't even just start say life, life more abundantly. So he was correcting what was wrong. Okay, so we beheld him. He, came, he left. He went back. But he said, I have to go. Because if I go, I'm going to send the spirit who is like me, one like me, and he will be with you forever. He will never leave you. So really... You, you can never truly feel abandoned because you're not an orphan. Jesus said, I won't leave you as an orphan. I will come to you and I will be with you forever. The spirit of truth. Okay, so any feelings of abandonment and being an orphan, really it's, it, it's not correct for you to encounter that. It's not true regardless of what you feel and what you see. So the glory corrects, and the glory is going to start to come into our services. Now, in Europe, before the devil stopped it, it was already coming in. We, we would literally be like uh, in France or in, in Switzerland. We would be, I would be talking, and I would see, I would just as clear as these people walking around, I would see an angel come in and just stand beside a person. And I would call them out, and I'd say, you got a back problem, God's healing it right now. Just like that, just words after words after words. Then we'd find out that that lady had an inoperable vertebrae issue in her lower back, and she was instantly healed. But the angel came in and stood beside her. Well, you know, I don't even believe in that. But it didn't matter, did it? And the glory cloud would start rolling in. In Germany, it would just roll in. I would stand up like this. And everybody would fall out. And for two hours, I couldn't speak. Any language. I remember Kathy was there. It's, I think it's on film. I was over here. It was the fourth day. We got there for two weeks. It's the fourth day. And, and I have this angel that would come with me and follow me. Except when I'd go to foreign countries, sometimes it would be days before he'd show up. So I would get through customs, but he wouldn't. <laughs> because he's fighting. So we have a line of people here, and my translator, Kathy's, I think she was, you, were you with me when that angel came in? Standing right, or were you? You were sitting like this, okay. So I, 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 I had to under the anointing, not under this angelic, angelic sisters, assistance that I usually have, which is profound. It's like beyond anything. So I went through this whole line of people and I had this much left and my translator's here, so I'm given words and tr she's translating. And as I went to this person right here, this flash, everybody saw it. This flash comes flying through and stops right here in front of me. And when it stopped, all the light that that angel carried stacked up behind him because it was stretched from his speed. It went like that, and all the rest of the, the line fell, <laughs> including the translator. And I said, it's about time you get here. <laughs> That's what I said. Okay, because... Whether you believe this or not, or what, I really don't care. But I, I can operate under the anointing, and I can preach, I can teach, I can lay hands on people. But then there is this angelic realm where they carry something that allows my spirit then to open up into something else. And then their assistants, they minister for those who are going to inherit salvation. They're flames of fire. So then all of a sudden... 
it's shifted, even though it's ministry, it's shifted into something else. But see, there is another realm, there is another way, which is the glory, which you read about in Azusa Street. So you read these, these times where the glory came in, in Argentina. And, and you read about the Moravians and the Moravian Falls. I've been there. I've been, I've been to all these places. I've encountered the angels. There's another realm that's opened up through prayer. And because God's destiny is in a certain place for a certain time. And these people that are encountering this, they go out and they become history makers. Yes. And it's usually through an, one of these intercessory events that happen in an area that breaks it open and then it becomes what you call a revival. But it's not, it's not what you think. It's the realms colliding. Wow. And this realm gives in to the glory realm. So the, in Azusa Street, there was the glory cloud and the eyewitness accounts that you can read were that the kids would play in those clouds hide and seek in the glory cloud. That's how thick it was. So, I'm being very transparent with you. The problem that I'm having is, is that being, claiming that you're human, it just doesn't cut it as an excuse anymore. I'll tell you why. Because when Jesus quoted to the Pharisees, like we talked about the first night, he was quoting Psalms 82, which says, you have become like mere men, but ye are gods. But you've become like mere men. And Paul even quotes it. He even says, you're just like acting like mere men because you're acting in the flesh. You're causing divisions among yourselves. You're acting like mere men. He's quoting Psalms 82, which is talking about something that's beyond what you can even imagine. Because people are asking, okay, what are the watchers? Who's Melchizedek? But see, you're trying to figure it out based on all the little game pieces you have down here, which it, it, it's not going to work. You can't build this puzzle with what you have. It has to come through Revelation. So even the prophets, when they, they wrote the scriptures, you read and go, oh, come on, guys. Can you just like give us a little more than this? This is like crayons and a piece of paper compared to what you're not really helping me here. But see, you have to understand, they didn't have the tools to put down because it wasn't from this realm. How do you describe something that's not from this realm? So Jesus had to stay within that realm of being human with the Holy Spirit ministering through him. He only did what his father was doing. He only said what his father was saying. He said, you're going to receive the Holy Spirit. When he comes, he's not going to speak on his own. I'm like, well, wait a minute now. He's God. Well, yeah, Jesus is God too, but he was in submission when he came to the earth. Now the spirit is in submission to the father. He is only going to say what the father is saying. That's what Jesus said. He's not going to speak on his own. So the spirit is not speaking anything on his own. He's only repeating what the father is telling him to do. So if you're going to speak by the spirit, you're going to be speaking what the father is saying. And, what, and you're going to do what he's doing. But you're going to do it in the realm of what Jesus operated in. Which means it is possible to walk on the water. He did not do that as a son of God. He did that as a son of man. When the spirits, evil spirits, recognized who he was, they said, we know who you are, the son of God. He said, shut up. He wouldn't let them say that. Because he had to stay in the realm of the perfect sacrifice, encountering everything that you and I encounter and doing it right as an example so the temptation in the desert was for him to perform as God. And he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. He did that for us. So that it was legally binding. Now see how much better you feel? Because what happens in your spirit is, is your spirit accepts the truth. Because I haven't said anything out of line because it's all in the word. 
Okay, but then your body and your mind respond to what you're experiencing in your spirit. And then all of a sudden, you might have bought yourself two or three more years of life just by being in this service. Or even more. You might have defeated cancer that you don't even know about because something happened chemically in your body because you made a decision based on revelation by the word. See, he sent his word and healed them. That's how he heals. He sends his word. You have to mix everything with faith. The word, the preaching of the word instills faith. Why? Because it's experiential. So I'm done with people that restrict the word to just knowledge. I'm done with that. Because I need to eat the bread that came down from heaven because that's my healing. It's the children's bread. I don't eat the crumbs off the floor. That was for the Samaritan woman. I'm seated at a table that King David describes. He said, thou preparest a table in honor of me in the presence of my enemies. And you honor me and they sit and stare at me while you honor me. And I say, pass the healing, please. I'll take a bowl of deliverance, please. Hey, can I have an extra scoop of wisdom? I'm going to eat from the table of the Lord, and I'm being honored. It says that in Aramaic. This is the glory realm. So I know that my world is framed by Psalms 91. It isn't framed by fake news and ZNN. That's right. It's, it's framed by 91. The enemy, the enemy in Psalms 91 is the enemy that Jesus was talking about because he was quoting Psalms 91 when he said, you're going to trample on serpents and scorpions and you'll have power over all the enemy. He is quoting Psalms 91. My enemy is under my feet if you want to bring the Bible into it, yes. which means that a thousand will fall and 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. You see, I'm not saying that hoping it works. I think we're, we're to a place where we got to actually believe. So either you believe or you're going to go and you're going to trust a system that is not trustworthy. Remember, it's an opinion. They give you an opinion, and they practice on you. And I say, you know what? When you're done practicing, call me. <laughs> I'm serious. I don't want somebody flying with me that's practicing. Do you? Do you want to be on a plane where somebody's practicing? <laughs> well, sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Well, you know what? You do your trials take six years, then you can put something into me. Can you believe I just said that? Because it's six years. If something happens, it's done. And that something has already happened to some people. Moving on, moving on. Get the car ready. Here we go. Okay. So you have to remember that the God you serve is limitless and timeless. He doesn't play the game. And that's why Paul said, be separate, stand out from among them. Are you ready to do that? Yes. Well, you should already be there, but, you know, I'm encouraging you. You are holy because God bought you. He owns you, and holiness is ownership. Holiness is private stock. He's purchased you for his own display in his mansion. He bought you for his own private viewing. And you know, 
because I don't care anymore and I probably need to change my attitude, but I was shown. I, was, I, I saw myself on, the, on, on a desk and Jesus was sitting there. It was a candle, but when I looked closer, it was me. And I, I was going like this and the flame was from here up. It was a candle. I thought it was a candle. When I looked closer, it was me. He was sitting there looking at me, smiling as I burnt before him with holy fire. Yeah. Boy, never thought I'd share that one. You see, because then people go, well, who do you think you are? I go, well, I know who I am. I'm his prized possession. How about you? Are you in that group? You're his prized possession. He, he invested everything in you. He, he bought the whole market. He bought the whole thing. He dumped everything into you. So you're his prized possession, and you share in his glory. Okay, so that's my introduction. Now we can get into the message here. So, okay, so you, you have to realize that your spirit is going to respond to the spirit of God, but then your body should respond not to your thoughts, your brain. It should respond to spiritual events that are happening inside of you that may not be interpretable. Okay, so you experience something in your spirit, but what you have to do is take that and transfer it into your body and let it come into your mind. Because a spiritual ignition is happening all the time in your, in your spirit. So the same power that rose Jesus from the dead is dwelling in you, right? I mean, if you want to bring Paul into it. But he didn't just stop there. He said, and that power will quicken your mortal body. That means your dying body. It's going to quicken it. And the theologians will say, well, you know, that's at the resurrection. Okay, fine, but I'm going to take a snack every now and then now. I'm going to take a dip of the resurrection power and let it be transferred into my flesh. So Elisha died of a disease. He got sick and he died. They threw him in the, in the cave, you know. Years later, after a war, they were carrying a dead soldier and they said, you know, let's just throw him in this cave. When he touched the bones of Elisha, who had died of a sickness, but he had the double portion of Elijah on him. The, the latency of that power in his bones rose the soldier from the dead. So it kind of like messes up the theologians if you start bringing all this in. So here we are in the New Testament. Here you are tonight with the power that rose Jesus from the dead. And Paul said to the Ephesians, I'm going to pray that your eyes will be enlightened, that you'll be flooded with light the spirit of revelation and the knowledge of him, that you would know the hope to which you've been called, that you would know the glorious inheritance that's in the saints, and that you would know the same power that rose Jesus from the dead that is dwelling in you. This is what he prayed for the Ephesians. If you remember in the books of Acts, that was the hub for witchcraft. And when they repented in the book of Acts, the Ephesians brought all their spell books, and there was tons of them that was burnt that night. Okay, so they had a mind that was set on the spiritual realm, but Paul is praying for them to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Yes. And this is what I feel is lacking in all of us is that spirit of wisdom and revelation because you don't need hands laid on you because you could recover, but if you don't change your mind, if you don't, renew your mind, you'll end up like my father who got healed of cancer and it came back. Why? Because you have to keep your healing. You have to keep your deliverance. It's not, think about it. How did the devil get there to begin with? How do we get sick? He takes advantage of our weakness. So in the flesh we're weak, but in the spirit, the spirit comes in and in our weakness, he makes us strong. So there's always going to be a guard set up to guard your healing, to guard your deliverance, to guard your, your provision, your prosperity. There's always going to be that guard that has to be set up 
so that you don't lose the edge. Because Satan goes around seeking who he may devour. You just have to be non-edible. You have to be not palatable to him. Well, how do you do that? He doesn't mess with people that can stare him down and not be afraid. See, it's all about fear. The horses will take advantage of you when they know you're afraid. They can feel it. They know they can mess around with you. They'll head for the first low limb at full speed to knock you off. All right, back on the subject here. Okay. God does not override our will. So what I have done is laid out the perception of being off the carousel and coming back. Paul had the same thing. I don't consider myself equal with Paul. I'm just saying that I have the privilege of coming back and doing it right. Yes. I got another chance to do it right. My rewards, that's why the book table is what it is. That's why everything about our life is the way it is, is because I know how it works. And I'm not going to mess up again. I got a second chance at it. And instead of just writing one book and being satisfied with that, I'm on my 54th book. Okay? And you need to get writing. You need to get, you need to get in the spirit and start to produce fruit. Yes. Whatever that is. I don't care if it's sewing or building or welding, whatever it is. And you need, if you're a plumber, you need to sew a job into, into a widow's wife life. Yes. You need to do some electrical work if you're an electrician. You need to sew into somebody that can't pay you back. You use your gift and you sew just one event and you watch what happens. The least that I can do is give my salary to a single mom. That's the least I can do because at 60 years old, God didn't forget and he paid me back. And it's not good enough that he just did that. I wanted to continue in that flow. So I'm, I'm not going to like rest with just what he just did. If he heals you, then you need to start praying for people. You, you need to immediately start a flow. And I'm not talking about a little squirt gun. I'm talking about a fire hose. Keep that flow going. Whatever God does in your life, keep it as a flow. I can tell you stuff. You might not be ready for it. But if, if, if the Spirit tells you to do something... You need to do it immediately and so that you don't get talked out of it. And what you're holding on to may not accomplish your dream. And so you need, you need to give it. That's right. And we're not taking an offering, so don't even think about it. I'm telling you this because you are the one that is limiting God. If you can show him that you trust the other realm more than you trust this realm, you're going to have both of them. You're going to start owning. Because if he can trust you, he's going to give you great. With the little, he's going to give you great. Can he trust you? You have to pass all your tests. When I was growing up, I was 18. I was ready to leave to go to college. I always wanted to be a musician because my dad was a professional saxophone player. He worked all the time. We had five kids. He couldn't afford to buy me an instrument. When I came back from this experience, I could look at an instrument and I knew how to play it so I would order it on Amazon. I would go to a dark room, I would pay, play Alberta, the Riveras, 
I would play all ten, I'd get all 10 of their albums, I would put them on in a dark room, and I would play with them. I've never met them. But the Lord said that they are flowing in the spirit in their music, so you can play them. And I would spend, Kathy will tell you, I spent hours for, for over sometimes a year with a violin in the dark, with a cello, with a soprano saxophone. And I would pray in tongues and I would sit there until I could play a note. And then I would play another note. And then, of course, the Riveras were playing in the key of D a lot. So I learned how to play the key of D. And now he says, now learn all the rest of the keys. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so in the dark, I learned to play the piano and all the other instruments. The saxophone I have now, my, my dad played for 68 years professionally before he passed away in his 80s. How did I get the instrument I have? I got it in Germany. It's the best you can buy. I don't deserve that. My dad does. Kenny G does. But how did I get the best? Do you understand? Because he, tr he trusted me, but my dad couldn't even afford one for me. So now you understand why I give away instruments. Because that should never have happened. I should be playing instruments since I was eight years old. That was God's will. But see, the limitations down here prevented me. But see, God made it up to me. Well, what do you think he wants to do for you? So, so what you're seeing is an example of, of catch-up time, making it up. You're watching in five years. You're watching payback. And you're looking at it and you're saying, oh, I wish that was me. Well, it's going to be you if you will... Get off the carousel. Okay, so faith overrides this realm. Faith overrides what seems to be set as your limitations. Because what faith is, it's a substance of things hoped for. It is actually the title deed of what is not seen. It's the evidence Faith is the title deed of what you cannot see, is what it says. Faith is a, the substance. Faith is the title deed. It's not just what you hope for. It says it's the title deed or this, the evidence of what is unseen. What I found is, is that it exists. You see, that, that jet was, made, was the first one made that was given to the public. But when that serial number came off, it was number four. The other three were test. That was our jet. But it didn't come to us for 11 years. But God already knew that it was ours. And the person who bought it was the demo pilot for Embraer that took it around to promote it. He took care of it. He knows that plane. He wrote the manuals. He wrote and made the algorithms inside of the simulator that all the pilots that train for our airplane, he made that simulator before the airplane was even off the production line. He was the owner of it, and he said, I, I know this airplane is for you and Kathy. And so he only sold it to us. It would not sell for a year. It fell through four times. Each time they upgraded it at the request of the customer, and then it fell through. By the time they were done, it was a brand new airplane. Hallelujah. They could not sell it. As soon as we put the money down for it, they, they, they had seven buyers. They had one guy from Holland get on an airplane and fly over with cash. And I said, it's ours. But what happened was for a whole year, they couldn't sell it. But as soon, Then the war began. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So what 
ha, what is it that, that is yours that God has the serial number written in your book in heaven? Come on. What, what is it that God has for you that's, that is destined for you, but you're focusing on the limitations and you're trying to navigate through this life with the tools that are down here instead of using what all the generals in the faith used was they used their trust in God. So, so getting back to the operating room, Jesus came in through a glory door into the spirit realm of that operating room. We're in the spirit and he comes in from another place where it was bright glory. And I'm thinking, why does he need, he's all, we're already in the spirit realm. Why does he need that? And why did he leave through that? And what I realized was because he has his body, he has to operate at even a higher level. How did Moses endure 40 days in that glory? Twice. How did he do that? And yet in the new covenant, we're not even allowed to interpret our dreams in our church. Our church for, you know, churches are like, you can't prophesy. You can't do this. You can't do that. You know, Why would anybody restrict a person, a lamb? Why would anybody restrict the children of God from operating in the spirit? Why would any minister do that? See, what's happened is, is what you need to know is people have been infiltrated. And they're not speaking from the Spirit anymore. Yeah, they might have got it right and said something. But at what point do you give yourself over to a familiar spirit that mimics the Holy Spirit? And you turn it into a Christian seance instead of a Holy Spirit meeting. Where it becomes a seance. And you're trafficking devils. I have to say this because I might as well just unload my whole clip. Yeah. It's always going to be by faith through love. It's always going to be that way. It's always going to be faith through love. Always. So if you have faith and you don't have love, you're a tinkling symbol and all that stuff. And you can offer your body to be burned. And that means nothing. Just read Paul, you know, he was in a bad mood in chapter 13 because he was dealing with carnal people that thought they were spiritual and they weren't spiritual. He says, I want to address you as spiritual, but I can't. You're, con you're mere babies. Chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians, he talks about the second chapter is just amazing about being spiritual. He says, I wish I could address you as spiritual. See, we don't read the first verse in chapter 3, which is after that amazing chapter 2 in 1 Corinthians. Paul said, I cannot address you as spiritual, but as carnal, mere babes. When you should be on me, you're still on milk. And yet they were being used in the gifts of the Spirit. So your spirituality is not being used in the gifts of the Spirit. Your spirituality is producing fruit. Which is different than the gifts. Because the gifts are gifts. They're not yours. They're the Holy Spirit's. But the fruit is yours. It says the fruit of the Spirit, but really in the Greek there is no capital S. So a lot of times it's interchangeable with your spirit. It's your spirit by the Holy Spirit. So getting back to your will as we close. God will not override your will. So when you produce fruit... It's because you chose to produce fruit. If you speak in tongues, it's because you decided to speak in tongues. You go ahead. 
I, I totally agree with you. So faith is not something that you conjure up in your mind. Faith is sight. Faith is seen into the spirit realm. And knowing that it's there and you can take it and you grab it. It's not wishful thinking. It's not confession. The, the, the people that are in the Bible that are mentioned in chapter 11 of Hebrews were people that had a relationship with God where they learned to trust him that what he said is true. And he, he was worth dying for. And they were commended for their faith based on a word that is in Hebrew, the word trust. It was a relationship where God wouldn't lie to me. Literally, it means that God wouldn't lie to me. He told me, and so he will do it. And so Abraham raised that knife because he knew that God had said that he would give him a son. And he wouldn't give it to him and then take it away. And it shows that God was even surprised. Because when he raised it up, he stopped him. The angel stopped him and says, now I know that you would not withhold your son. Well, it, God said that. Well, why did he say that? Because he wanted to see it. He acted surprised. Abraham knew that God was going to stop him. And of course, Mount Moriah, we know, is where Golgotha is today. So literally, when Isaac asked, okay, we got the firewood and we got the fire, but where's the sacrifice? Literally in Hebrew, it says God sees himself, the lamb. God sees himself, the sacrifice. Jehovah Jireh, God sees, thus he provides. It literally says God sees himself, the sacrifice. He said that on Mount Moriah, which is now where the crucifixion took place, Golgotha. It's where David, he took the head of Goliath and he went to Jerusalem and he buried it there. He buried the head of Goliath there, according to scripture. And it was Goliath from Gath, Golgotha. Golgotha, Goliath from Gath. He buried the skull of the giant hybrid at the foot of the cross. And Jesus was raised up right above that, and he said, Telestai, paid in full. So David saw that he had to take out the giant because David was in line of the Messiah. He had to slay the giant and take his head and bury it there to fulfill all righteousness. So when Satan and Michael were arguing over where Moses' body was going to be buried, it was the same situation as Elisha in the cave. You don't want a body laying around that has resurrection power. <laughs> Do you get it? Satan knew wherever they put that body, it better not be in the center of Jerusalem. Because he can't touch it then. You'll get it in about a year. Why do you think they were arguing about where they were going to lay Moses' body? It's because wherever they placed his body was going to be holy ground, off limits. 
Now, Michael said, the Lord rebuke you because he's an archangel and he's talking to a cherub that's fallen. It's different than us. Jesus said we can address devils. We have power, authority over them. Okay, so I believe this has helped you. And well, I covered pretty much all of it. Um, so your life in heaven has value that's recorded and you're really off limits. And I'm finding that if you do not review your benefits, you can't partake of them. So what happens is there's infringements where the Psalms 91 is not, is not being performed in your life. But not only did Jesus say those verses when he taught, John said in chapter 1, verse 12, he said this. He said, those who adhered and embraced him, Jesus, he gave them the power to become sons of God. The word there is the word for authority. The power there is authority. So he gave us the authority to become sons of God. This is in John chapter 1, verse 12. Now, I'm only saying this because in a short while, we're going to be in glory. But when we're in glory, you will look back and say, you know what? Just like what happened with me, I could have done so much more. But I didn't because I was preserving my position. I was conserving. Didn't want to make too many waves. Just wanted to. I thought that if I laid low, the devil would leave me alone. And I'd been to the best schools, had Jesus appear to me. And when I met him, I had fallen short. He didn't say a word to me. He smiled at me as I got audited. He didn't say a word. He flashed before my eyes my whole life at a speed that is not even available. And in that flash of everything, I saw the gaps of what could have been done. I saw the opportunities that presented me. Even as I've been walking around this room, there was opportunities to minister. And I look in my spirit, what do you want me to do about that? Or do you want me to go over there and stand in front of them? I saw every opportunity that was available to me it, I had only accomplished 35% wow. of my potential. And at the end of that, he's still smiling at me as though he didn't know what just happened to me. But uh, he did know. And I said, I could have done so much more if I would have known. And as soon as I said that, I heard the Spirit say, but you could have known. I said, I, if, I, if I would have known, I would have done so much more. And immediately, Jesus didn't say a word. He just keeps smiling. And the Spirit said, yeah, but you could have known. Because I didn't dig. I didn't pursue. You see, this life is not about surviving. This life is about presenting the standard of heaven in this realm by taking things from the other realm and yanking them and demanding that they appear before you. Taking that which is in heaven and pulling it in. And if you can't handle that, well then maybe you need to just go have a weenie roast right now. <laughs> and just survive. Make a s'more. Because what that does is that medicates you for another day. You go and you do what you need to do just to survive another day. But see, that is not what's written about you in heaven. And I would be a failure if I didn't tell you all this. 
So things change because I decide that they must change based on the introduction of the glory Amen. of the Father wanting to correct something. I didn't know that I needed a change. I didn't know that I needed something until he tells me. What has he told you is the standard of heaven for your life? What has he tried to get across to you for years telling you? And you weren't able to grasp it because you're so beat down and traumatized. It is hard. Listen to me very clear, carefully and read my lips all over the world. It is hard to kill a human being. It is very hard to kill a human being. It took 900 years. And now it takes about 100 or less. But in us is still the maker, the creator. And it's hard. It's hard for the devil to kill us. He has to work at it. But what he has to do is he has to hijack you. He has to hijack you. He has to get you to side with him. Whether it be bird, bat, cow, the disease of the week, whatever it's going to be next week. Echo, foxtrot, golf, hotel, indigo. It's a new variant, you know. Well, you know what? It has to stop. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It has to stop. Who's going to stand up and say it's, it's done? We are. Okay. So you do this, right. All right. You do this and you, you don't do anything towards the three, you know, the three, you know, all those three letter designators, the alphabets, the three, you know, you don't trust in that. You get your, you get your okay on your health through the word of God and the spirit. And then you go to the doctor. I, I just went to the doctor. I have to go to the doctor in order to fly. But I sat there for the 20 minutes and witnessed to him. He goes, he's looking at my log book. He said, how did you get into a phenom 300? I said, it's God. And I started testifying and telling him my story. He goes, I'm going to tell my wife. I said, oh, I flew with your wife at Southwest. You let the doctor verify it. I tell, I tell my doctor, oh, I'll be getting off of that. I won't need that very long. That's right. I'm working myself into a healing. Yes. So I'm going to get better and better. I don't take myself off of it. I let God confirm it. Because I'm the one that makes the decisions in the spirit. I don't know if you're getting this. Yes. You don't go to a doctor to find out what's wrong with you. You go to the doctor and you work with him to get better. You follow your spirit. My doctor has helped me and he's Mormon. That doesn't bother me. When we were in there, we asked how his wife was doing. She said, not too well. My wife goes, can we pray for her? He goes, yeah. He holds out his hands with his stethoscope on. And we just broke the devil over her and prayed for her healing. He asked us to pray with him. He didn't even have a mask on. And we were less than six feet from each other because we held hands. Amen? Amen. Mormon. Did I mention Mormon? Oh, wow. Thank you, Lord. So, 
don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. It changes everything. You, you know we're all going to be in glory. But down here, what's let God influence us? I saw simple things like drinking pure water. I, I saw that if you did that from 35, starting at 35, I don't understand how I know these things. I just know things when I was there. If I started drinking pure water, filtered water, with a higher pH, when I started at 35, it would add 15 years to my life. At the end of my life, I would gain 15 years strictly because my, my, my filters in my body, they're overtaxed, not by the IRS, <laughs> but from the environment. They're filtering out all the time and they need to be cleaned. And I saw that a higher pH level was more oxygen and that that wouldn't allow diseases to live. I saw that at the time of Abraham and at the time of Adam that the oxygen in the atmosphere and everything grew and was bigger and that the atmosphere was way different than it is now. And I saw that the magnetic field of the earth has deteriorated to where we can't even lift what we could lift back then. And our body is electrical and it, 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 uh, there, there's, there's a, a way that if everything is right, that you are stronger just because of the field. And I, I saw that all these little things that you could do is what your body needed, but it's been lost. I saw that everything that's synthetic, your body rejects. So they can't patent a natural substance, so they, 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 they change the structure enough to patent it. But then the body doesn't like it. So the side effects are even worse than not taking it. So there's all kinds of things you can do to strengthen your immune system. So why would you want to introduce something that talks to your DNA? What would you, why would you want to introduce something into your body that is foreign and is an enemy when you could just boost your immune system and the T cell go, hey buddy, six feet. And the T cells start attacking anything that's foreign. This is what God designed our body to, our body was design, designed to defend itself. And my, my surgeon, who is the Seattle Seahawks surgeon, he told me that the body wants to heal itself, but it does not have the necessary nutrients to build back cartilage or to, to redo something that's broken. If it did, it would automatically, it's waiting for those that to be introduced. Well, it used to be that way. It used to be that we didn't die. You got to remember that. So... Would you rather listen to a talk like this or be overwhelmed with how fast you're going to die? <laughs> you know, the, oh, you know, this happened. And, oh, you know, you know, so-and-so, she's gone. And, you know, and you listen to all this. And what happens is that becomes your reality. Yes. And then all of a sudden, you're, you're just waiting for it to happen. But you know what's said, 85% of what you think is going to happen doesn't happen. We are so intricately and powerfully made that it's hard to kill a human being. We are fighters. As human beings, we don't give up. We fight to the very last. We do everything we can to live. Because it's in us to live, because it's God's will for us to live. Yes. 
Okay. So grasp these things and allow the Spirit to start to talk to you about not getting upset about your, your, your really weird relatives that freak you out, <laughs> that flip you out and get you all upset. Stop it. Stop letting them have that power. Stop letting them control your blood pressure. If your car, when you walk to it, you don't know if it's going to start today. Well, you need to immediately go into the realm of faith and take hold of that vehicle that will start. If you ran out of money for your education, you need to go. There's plenty of money on this earth. It's just in the wrong hands. You need to take hold of that in the spirit and get the substance of the thing that's hoped for. The, get the evidence of it and pull it into this, this realm by faith. I pull my healing in, I pull healing into, into this realm, into my body constantly. I'm constantly expanding my horizons by allowing the spirit to say things that are unbelievable in the natural. I don't believe for things that I know I can have. I believe for the impossible. I let God show me something that is impossible. I have dreams about walking up to people that don't have limbs and watching them grow out. I have dreams when I, I lay hands on people. And I watch their, I watch their head come down to, to the right size in between my hands. I see children in my dreams where I was there for them when my parents couldn't be. I was there for them. And I saw that they grew up and changed history. Yes. I saw that, that in a generation where it looks like we're all given up, I saw this ray of hope inside of me that says, no, it's not time yet. Paul wrote to the Thessalonians saying, go back to work. You quit your jobs because you thought Jesus was coming. He's not coming back yet. That was in 65 AD. He said, if you, you no, know, that's where you get the saying. If you don't work, you don't eat. That was a long time ago. How, how, many, how many DVD series have come out since then on the a book of Revelation? The only bowl that's being poured out on me is the bowl of favor. Yes. Amen? Okay. You want to worship? Let's worship. Amen? Amen. Thanks for hanging out. You all are troopers. Just so you know, the reason why I do these services the way I do, and they're long, is because the demonic is stubborn. And so... I'm just going to be honest with you like I, you expect me to. But the demonic is stubborn, so I have to pound them for sometimes hours. And it, it affects the region. It affects you. I don't want those demons going with you. So I'm not going to let, let it go. I will keep preaching until I get a release of my spirit because i got to seal it up because there's no way that you should have to deal with these demons on your own. In this corporate anointing where people love you, and you feel unity, you should be experiencing freedom. Amen. You should be able to take it with you. The demonic should not be allowed to have any authority over you. Amen. When demons are not allowed to operate, people get healed, they get, de they get, they get delivered, yes. the supply starts to come. You, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't even imagine how much of your finances is being withheld from demonic entities that are surrounding and shutting you down your supply line. Yes. You think it's just the California ports. <laughs> but if Amazon can deliver something that I ordered two hours ago, yeah. I think God can deliver yeah. to you yeah. personally. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Okay. Now, this is what I'm expecting for tomorrow morning. I'm expecting that we just worship. Amen. And, it, and if I preach, I preach. But I think that our response 
from the Word of God should be that we turn back and we start to quote Psalms 90, 29 to God. Because Psalms 29 is talking about the voice of the Lord and His, His power. So Psalms 29 is what the Lord asked me to repeat back to Him all the time. So that's what I want you to do. I want you to get into Psalms 29. Now, it's not that long. I want you to read it and think about this is the person who created you. And the winds and the wave obey him. And his voice splits the cedars and the mountains catch on fire and quake when he speaks. Everything obeys him. This is the God that we serve. This is the Lord that wrote a book about you before you were born. This is the God that heals you. This is the God that has brought you to this place. If you do not know Jesus, get up here and let me pray for you. If you're a witch, good witch, a bad witch, a sandwich, you get up here, I'm going to pray for you. If you're a witch, get up here. It, it didn't work. Amen? Okay. If, so everybody in here should know Jesus. Everybody in here should know Jesus or you need to get up here. I break the power of the enemy. fire on this music. Do you feel it? Do you feel the fire on this music? I wouldn't dare go up there and disturb that. I'm not going to even go up there. I wouldn't dare disturb what's going on up there. That's from the altar of God. Why don't we just worship? Let's worship. Amen. Tokuna stande, stinekaya kuna kata, stabo sheve esto maste stande, lanto labe elevis no unda baste, and it shall be as I said it will be. Masokomula mondo, nepe, stay close to me, stay close to me, stay close to me, keep your heart next to my heart. We are one, we are one. We are one in the sun. Lando la mande epe ne pe ne pe ne pe ne pe. Never tolerate fear. Never tolerate fear. I am near. Do not tolerate fear. You are created to live by faith. You are my children. Shama hashte, shama hashte. I have sealed you in forever with the blood of the Lamb. Forever. Forever, forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. We thank you, Father. Your word is settled forever in heaven. The blood is forever on the mercy seat. Forever, 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 forever. You reign forever, O oh Lord. We give you the glory, Lord. We thank you, Father. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We worship you. Your fire, Lord. We thank you for your glory and your fire. The baptism of fire. The Holy Spirit and the baptism. The Holy Ghost and fire. Shanahorra masete. Shamorra mamase. Sokorobushte. We thank you for the fire on this altar tonight, Lord. And the fire on the worship. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. For sounds of heaven coming off this altar, Lord. Sounds of heaven. A song of the Lord. 
the song of the Lord, the song of the Lord. We worship with the angels in heaven. The angels are worshiping with us tonight. Lift up your voice. Release your voice to the Lord. Victory, 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 Vashtande, 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 break forth, break forth, break forth, rise up, be strong, live long, be strong, live long, fulfill your days. Fulfill your days. Do not be afraid. Fear not. Ha ha ha. Joy, joy, joy. Rejoice. 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 Hallelujah. Rejoice evermore and pray without ceasing. Rejoice evermore. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Hey, everybody, did you know that rejoice means to spin around violently under the power of an emotion? This is rejoice. Rejoice, 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 rejoice. Make the right choice. Make the right choice. Rejoice. Woo! Woo! Rejoice! Hallelujah! 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 Rejoice! Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! Rejoice! Rejoice and be glad. Joyce. 
Worship all the way through into your breakthrough. Woo! Woo! Hallelujah! Thank you, Father. Hallelujah! Cause praise is my weapon. Yes, praise is my weapon. Praise is my weapon. Oh, we're breaking through, breaking through.
And you're the song I'm singing from my heart straight to yours. You're the song I'm singing. Cause you spin me round and round. As I dance upon your feet As you spin me round and round Oh, you sweep me away Yes, you sweep me away You sweep me away You take me by the hand And I put my feet upon your feet And you spin me round and round and round and round and round and round So I will rejoice and be glad Oh, we're the people that celebrate, we celebrate the Lord And we will rejoice and be glad We are your people and we celebrate you, Abba. We celebrate you, Father. Hey! Cause 
Thank you. 